Now there's a little bit of functionality we touched on just a tad. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive. So go into your palette here, grab a plain 3D, drag it onto your canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. I'm going to switch over to a skin shader 4, turn on my poly frame here, and let's talk about under geometry, there's dynamic subdiv, and then you have your dynamic button over here. By default, smooth subdiv is going to be up to 2. Let's go ahead and turn that down to 0, and let's focus in on this thickness for now. So if we take this thickness and we drag it up, you're going to see it's going to give us real thickness, and we can see both sides of our object. Now again, this is dynamic, it's not real. So I can do Shift D to turn off dynamic, D to turn it back on, you can say always yes. So again, you can toggle this on and off. You're going to see, I can see the front side of the object here, but if I turn off dynamic, I can't see the back side. Uh, of course, you can go down here to your display properties, turn on double, and you can see both sides. However, if I hold down shift and snap to the side, it's a perfectly flat plane, so it's just going to disappear. So another alternative is just go, let's turn off double, let's turn on dynamic, and because we have thickness dialed in, we can see the thickness of the object and we can see both sides. Now, this is like an instance of this front side with dynamic thickness. So if I go through here and I move this um, this way, uh, this is going to follow right along. So it's just this object or this fake thickness, again, it's just following your real thickness, which is in this case is right here. Now, if you add this uh, with smooth subdiv, uh, it's perfectly fine. You can just go through here and again, you can move this and you get a much smaller, uh, smoother result. Again, smooth subdiv of zero will give you this result. And then as you add this, it'll give you a preview of what it would look like subdivided. Now, post subdiv and post subdiv off are essentially, if I just go through here and I just really crank up this thickness here, if we have post subdiv off and we have smooth subdiv of four, essentially what it's telling it is add the thickness resolution as I'm subdividing dynamically. Or in other words, if I go ahead and say apply, I'm going to have five subdivision level history because that's what I had on my dynamic smooth subdiv. So I have, I can go all the way back to one and then two, three, four, five. And if I hit delete lower, you're going to see I have edges all the way built in here. And it keeps it a nice sharp edge because if we hit control Z uh, back to where we had just dynamic history here. Uh, by default, the polyplane that you bring in has the edges creased. So you can go down here and you can say crease, uncrease all. And we've already talked all about creasing. So you're an old pro at that by now. You can see when I say uncrease all, it won't crease those edges and then we'll get a smoother fall off. However, again, if we hit apply, we'll have perfectly reconstructable subdivide geometry. So again, as I'm applying this smooth subdivision dynamic history, it's also subdividing that thickness. So I'm able to reconstruct. Now again, if I undo back to where I just have my dynamic plane with no subdivision history, and we say post subdiv, that's going to really sharpen up my edges here, even though we can go in here and hit uncrease all. We're not creased at all, but what it's telling it is go ahead and subdivide my geometry four times and then add thickness. So when I apply this, if I go up here to reconstruct, I'm not able to. And if I look in here, you're gonna see I have very high resolution geometry up here, but this whole thickness in here only has one edge. You're gonna see lots of geometry here, just one edge through here. So if we undo that, you're going to see where that comes into play is, number one, we're telling it to do it post subdivision. So subdivide the plane first and then add thickness, which of course means this is going to have a lot of geometry and then your thickness is going to be added on after. Uh, here is where we can add segments. So here as I go through here and crank up these segments, you can attempt to kind of even out your geometry a little bit. Now there is a little bit of fancy footwork you can do if we go through here and undo back to where we just had our plane, and again, we'll crank up our thickness a bit, and we'll say post subdiv. So we're going to say subdivide the top and then add our thickness. You can cheat the system a little bit, and you can say, okay, for a smooth sub subdiv of two, you can go down here and say, give me four segments. And now when I hit apply, even though I applied it in post, I can still reconstruct back to on my original subdivision level one. So there are ways around that. But anyways, probably what I would use segments for if I'm going to use post subdiv smooth, is for your ability to go, okay, I'm going to dry up uh, smooth subdiv to two, and you can see how big those squares are. And then I can just manually go through here and add enough segments in here to make sure this geometry is nice and smooth. So when I hit apply, I get a nice smooth uh, result. If I go through here and smooth and then start sculpting across here, all the geometry is fairly equal. Let's go all the way back to the beginning here where we just have our plane. 
We have dynamic turned on, smooth subdiv of two. Go ahead and crank up some thickness. And actually, you know what? Let's take smooth subdiv down to zero and let's go into our Z model brush, BZM, hover over an edge. You're gonna see when I select this edge with this dynamic thickness on again, if we turn dynamic off, here's our object. You're gonna see the middle of the plane here is where our real geometry is. And that's because we have an offset set to zero. So if I hover over an edge and we say extrude edge loop, of course we can go through here and we can extrude an edge off, we can continue extruding an edge off. Uh, but again, it's not real thickness. We can go through here and turn off dynamic and all we're really doing is extruding off single edges here. But we can hit D or turn on dynamic and there it is again. But again, our real geometry is right in the middle. If we take this offset and set it to 100, you're gonna see, number one, my geometry kind of jumps a little bit. And that's because at negative 100, my real geometry is right here at the top and then all my dynamic geometry goes away from that. So now as I drag this out, my geometry from the top is gonna to be where my edge selector is. If I do the opposite and go to offset of negative 100, now my real geometry is this geometry down here and then it dynamically pushes up. So if I turn off dynamic, you're gonna see it pops up. And if I go back down here to negative 100, turn on dynamic, it goes down. And if I wanna split the difference, just turn this to zero. And now my dynamic thickness uh, is right in the middle of my actual geometry.